So in the previous section, when we were uh, understanding merge sort, right? When we were analyzing the merge sort time complexity, we saw an equation like this. Tn equals to 2Tn by 2 plus Cn, right? These relations are called recurrence relations, right? So these relations are called recurrence relations. And if you recall, we actually solved this recurrence relation by drawing the tree, right? If you recall, we drew that whole tree where you have n, it gets broken into two parts, n by two, then this gets broken into n by four, n by four. We drew this tree, right? This is called a tree. This is called the recursion tree method. We've actually solved merge sort. We've actually analyzed the time complexity of merge sort using something called as a recursion tree, right? Uh, when we learned it, it was very simple. Now we'll extend and learn the recursion tree method in more detail. We'll see some more examples to understand how to do it better, right? And your, your question could be, why should we care about recurrences? Because recurrences occur a lot of times. We've already seen that it occurs in merge sort. Wherever you have a recursive algorithm, wherever you have a recursive algorithm, right? So if you recall, in the case of merge sort, what do we do? We take an array of size n, break it into two arrays of sizes n by 2, n by 2, and then we combine them, right? So you first, you, so, you solve this n by 2 problem as, by, again, by breaking into n by 4, n by 4, again, performing merge sort, and then, so this is called a recursive algorithm. You must have learned it. It's basically in C programming when you learn, it is function calling itself, right? A different form of itself, basically. So whenever you have a recursive algorithm, which is very, very common in data structures and algorithms, you need to use recurrence relations. And they're extremely powerful, extremely potent technique. Now, given a recurrence relation like this, how do we solve it? We already solved it using a recursion tree method. Now let's go and see a bunch of techniques to solve it. You will, recurrence relations or recurrences occur a lot of times. Okay, we'll also learn about recurrence relations in discrete mathematics, when we learn discrete mathematics. Right? But it's also, see, this is a concept actually from mathematics, which is useful in algorithms. Right? So let's take, let's take an example so that it's clearer. Imagine I have a recurrence relation like this. Tn equals to 3t, okay, let's say floor of n by 4 plus cn square. Let's assume this is a recurrence relation. This, this is slightly more complex than what we have here. What we have is much more simpler, right? So let's assume we have a slightly more complicated version like this. How do we solve a recurrence relation like this? Right, here you have floor here, and here you have cn square. So let's start writing the thing, right? Let's start building the whole recursion tree. So you have n, so a problem of size n. Imagine for some recursive algorithm, you get this recurrence relation, how do you solve it? So what it says is a problem of size n is broken into three problems of size n by 4, n by 4. So we'll just ignore the floor here for a little while. Okay, we'll just assume that floor of n by 4, instead of writing floor of n by 4 every time, let's assume this is equal to n by 4, which means n is divisible by 4. If n is divisible by 4, then floor of n by 4 is same as n by 4, right? So a problem of size n is broken up into three problems of sizes n by 4, n by 4, and n by 4, right? And these three problems, look at this, because I have three here, I'm breaking it up into three sub problems. So a problem of size n is broken up into three problems of size n by four each. And to combine these three solutions, I need c n square time, right? So to combine these three, I need c n square. Okay, so I'll write this. Okay, so when I write it this way, what it means is given a problem like this, where n is broken up into three problems of size n by four, and to combine it, I require cn square. Now, the problem of size n by four will also be broken further, right? It will also be broken into three problems of sizes n by 16 each. So this will be n by 16, n by 16, and n by 16. Because n by four, look at this. So what is t n by four? t n by four will be three times t n by 16 plus c n square. What is n here? n by four. So c n square by 16. I've just replaced n with n by 4 here. Now, what does this mean? This means to combine these three solutions. So a problem of size n by 4 is broken up into three problems of size n by 16. And to combine these three problems, again, I take 
c n square by 16 time okay very simple let me erase this so as to avoid the confusion right but this is clear right let me just erase this okay now again similarly this will also be broken up into three problems of size n by 16 n by 16 n by 16 to combine all of them again i need c n square by 16 similarly n, n by 16 n by 16 n by 16 right now how much time does it take to combine each of these so this takes c n square by 16 this takes c n square by 16 this takes 3 n square by 16 so what is the total it takes for me it takes 3 by 16 c n square okay because i have c n square by 16 but i have three of these problems i need to combine this it takes c n square by 16 i need to combine this which takes c n by c n square by 16 c n square by 16 so total time it takes at this stage of the tree is 3 by 16 cn square. Okay, fair enough. Now let's take one of these, right? Let's take this. This will again be broken up into three problems. Now what will these three problem size be? n by 64, n by 64, n by 64. Now how much time I'll take to combine these three now? Let's look it up. Okay, how much time I'll take to combine these two? Uh, combine these three, right? It will be c n square by 16 square okay if, if you just write the formula if you just write the formula let's write it actually t n by 16 equals to 3 t n by 64 plus c n square c n square by 16 square i've just replaced n here with n by 16 and i got this that's what i'm showing here right very simple nothing very fancy here now look at this now look at this. How many sub problems will I have here? How many ways I have to combine? I have to combine. See, this will be broken up into three problems. This will be broken up into three problems. This will be broken up into three, 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 three. So what will I have here? If you just count carefully, right? Look, look at how many I'll have. Each of them is cn squared by 16 square. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So at this stage, I'll have 9 by 16 square c n square because i have nine problems like this this is one sub problem to combine these sub problems i require c n square by 16 square and i have nine of them right so at this level i'll have 9 by 16 square c n square and so on so forth finally at some level like if i keep going down this will just become one like i can keep going down this tree and at some point it will become one Right? Now I have a couple of questions. What is the depth of this tree? Right? How many levels are there in this tree? If you think about it, right? imagine if n is some, let's say 64. In the first level, it will become 16. In the second level, it will become 4. In the third level, it will become 1. Right? So, what, so if n equals to 64, if you keep going down, at some point you will reach 1. So the depth of the tree, exactly the way we have done the analysis for merge sort, we can show that the depth of the tree is nothing but log n base 4. Remember, for merge sort, we showed that, that the depth of this tree is log n base 2. Similarly here, because we are breaking the problems in by 4, right? we have log n by 4. Now, finally, we have to sum up all of them. If you recall what we have done, we have to sum up all of them, right? At the end of the day, we have to sum up all of them. So let's sum up all of them. You have c n square. Look, look at the first stage here. You have c n square. In the second stage, you have 3 by 16 c n square. Right? In the, sec in the third stage, in the third stage, you have 9 by 16 square c n square. In the third stage. Actually, in the fourth stage, in the fourth stage, so this is nothing but, if you look at this, this is nothing but, 3 by 16 square cn square. In the next stage, what you'll have, so this is nothing but, if, if I rewrite this carefully, this is nothing but, this is nothing but 3 by 16 squared. In the next stage, I'll have 3 by 16 cube cn square plus 3 by 16 power 4 cn square, so on and so forth till the time I get 1 here right so that's what happens now if you look at this can i simplify this problem this problem is nothing but if i take cn square outside okay till the time i get one okay so if i take cn square outside i'll get one plus 
3 by 16 plus 3 by 16 square plus 3 by 16 cube plus right 3 by 16 power 4 plus so on so forth till the time I get one if you look at this do you remember something that you learn in your 12th class mathematics this is called a geometric progression this is called a geometric progression right so uh, let me take you to Wikipedia for now okay so if you look at this what does Wikipedia say for geometric series right this is called a geometric series okay each of these elements is a geometric progression if you sum up all of them what you get is basically a geometric series right so if you have a plus a r plus a r square plus a r cube plus a r power 4 so on so forth for infinite number of course we don't have infinite number but we have finite number because at some point we'll reach just a value of 1 so the depth here is log n base 4 right the depth here is log is log n base 4 right so we don't have to worry at some point it will end right but if you look at this imagine imagine if I take the infinite series here if I take the infinite geometric series here what will this sum be so if you look at this formula here if you have 1 plus r plus r square plus r cube so on so on so forth for infinite number the value will be 1 by 1 1 by 1 minus r so what is our r here and this will work if r is less than 1 if the absolute value th this formula is true if and only if the absolute value of r is less than 1 right what is our r here if you write if I write r equals to 3 by 16 which is certainly less than 1 I can write this whole equation as say if I, if I go till infinity if I go till infinity this whole thing will become c n square right 1 plus r plus look at this this is r this is r square this is r cube r power 4 so on so forth what will this sum up to 1 by 1 minus r 1 by 1 minus 3 by 16 right what is this equal to c n square right so if you if you 1 by 13 by 16 so 16 by 13 now this is this is basically a constant if you think about it right this is basically a constant 16 minus 3 is 13 the 16 goes up so this is a constant so your tn by solving all of this what did we get we got that our tn is equal to our tn is equal to c n square multiplied by some constant this constant here is 16 by 13 now what does this mean since this is a constant i can always ignore this c is also a constant what does this mean this means my t of n is theta of n square problem solved right so i have derived that tn is equal to order of n square or theta of n square by just following look at this by just following the recursion tree method this is exactly what we have done in merge sort also but this is a slightly different exercise because unlike a merge sort here you have an n square term we, and we had to use the geometric series right so it's a very very simple neat elegant stuff nothing very fancy here okay very very simple stuff nothing very very hard or anything right so recurrence tree is one of my favorite methods because it helps you graphically visualize what's happening right as soon as i know that you have this thing like 3 by 16 3 by 16 square 3 by 16 cube that's it you know that the geometric progression here this this is always bounded right so you can conclude that it will be theta of n square so problem solved it's very very simple so my favorite my personal favorite because i don't have to remember anything here and this is very graphical right there are other methods that we learn where you have to remember a bunch of rules and things like that my personal preference is always for the recursion tree method because i don't have to overthink it it's very very simple it's very very diagrammatic and i can easily remember this visually